And, and can everyone can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, we're going to begin with a general introduction to spectral sequences. Um, so if you haven't seen them before, the idea is it's just a tool from homological algebra to calculate cohomology. So. The, the idea is um, you have a bunch of long exact sequences. So just put a bunch of long exact sequences together. Um, and the goal is to calculate cohomology of a space in terms of uh, related spaces slash related uh, cohomology theories. Okay, so, um, but the problem is often uh, we won't get the exact cohomology groups, we'll just get the filtration, but this will be enough uh, in many cases. So, okay, to be a little more specific, um, let's say we have a space X and say we, we are interested in uh, the cohomology of some space X, um, then the spectral sequence will give us um, a filtration of the cohomology or the, uh, homology like this. Um, and but it won't give us exactly to this, it will give us uh, sorry. it will give us the the quotients. So we will obtain uh, these quotients and the way they will appear is uh, we're going to have this this grid this two by two grid and um, we're going to have <clears throat> a bunch of groups and if I look at the diagonal let's say this diagonal uh, is uh, the sum of coordinates is n then um, then each of these groups, it looks like, say, say this is the EI n minus i coordinate, then this is going to be exactly this here. Okay, so, um, so now let me say something about how we get to this point. Like this, uh, this here, is usually called the um, the e infinity page, or like what the what the spectral sequence converges to. We don't begin with this, um, of course. So we begin with uh, we begin on page one, okay. And usually, page one is something we completely know. So page one is. Um, a grid, it doesn't have to be concentrated in the first quadrant, but usually it is. Um, so page one is just going to be a bunch of groups, which we, we know. And then um, to go from page one to page two, uh, we, take, um, we take cohomology according to some differential. Okay, so um, there is going to be some differential. Uh, so for, um, if we're talking about cohomology, the differential is going to be of degree uh, one zero. So it's going to look like this. And just take cohomology. So you just take uh, um, the kernel over the image and replace it uh, 
with what you get after applying cohomology, and that gives you page two. Um, and you get a bunch of groups, and then to get to page three, uh, so here we have page two. Um, And now, now we want page two, or sorry, page three. So page three, you do the same thing, except now you have a different differential. And uh, this time the degree is going to be two, negative one. So um, the differentials are going to look like this. Um, and you do the same thing. So, um, if you haven't seen these before, you might be wondering what these differentials are. Uh, these differentials come from the long exact sequences, which we get through, for example, the long exact, the exact sequences associated to a pair. So, um, so, so for instance, Sorry, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Uh, do you mind scrolling back up to the, the filtration bit? How, how does the in figure into this? Are we filtering the in homology on the diagonal? Is that it's like the E, I, N minus I? Where is the, the in used? The in. Um, e, I. Oh, oh, so this is just, I should probably say P. So this is just the um, coordinate. So this is P, this is N minus P. Um, so I think maybe when, when you have the filtration, right, it's, it's not a filtration on X, maybe it's like a filtration on H star of X or something, or like, like maybe HN of X. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, this should be an N and yeah, so each diagonal, uh, what it filters is um, like that degree of cohomology, right? Okay, cool, thank you. Um, okay, I just I'm sorry, that's, that's, yeah. that's the N that's appearing, like the, the N P plus Q equals N is filtering HN? Yeah. Okay, right. Cool. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, so let me give you some idea of um, where these differentials come from. So let's say X is uh, an n-dimensional CW complex. So there is um, there's a natural filtration. So just given by the K skeletons. I guess I used N for something else. So let me just say P. Um, okay, so then we have a bunch of long exact sequences corresponding to each pair, right? Uh, we just have the long exact sequence for cohomology, which looks like this. And these, uh, these maps here are going to be what we use to construct the differentials. Okay, so, so that was all kind of vague. Uh, let me try to be a little more uh, specific now with the example of the Lee Ray Serre spectral sequence. Okay, so, so again, we, we begin with uh, an n dimensional. Um, CW complex, so oops. 
and let's apply the singular chain functor. Um, so by star, I just mean the direct sum of um, over all integers. Okay, so um, okay, so we have this nice filtration, and we can essentially do two things. Um, we can so okay. So first, I'm going to do the homology version. Uh, so it's going to be the same, except the arrows are just going to go in a different direction. Um, so so we can either um, grade and then take homology or take homology and then grade. Um, and that will essentially give you either the first page or the like, or the last page, which we want. So if we, um, if we grade first and take homology, so let's say we, we grade. And by that, that I mean, we just have, um, we just take all these quotients. Uh, uh, so we have these these groups, and now we take homology. So um, the homology is just singular homology. Uh, so singular homology. And what do you get? Well, basically, by definition, you get um, what will be the E1 page. Sorry. Okay, so um, this is what is, we're going to start out with. And if we do things in the other direction, um, we'll actually get the filtration of the cohomology of X. Um, and that is what our goal will be. Okay, so, um, so, so, or we can, um, we can uh, take a filtration. Sorry, um, can I make a dumb comment real quick? Yeah. Maybe this is what you meant, but you say you want to take singular homology of that quotient. I think you mean just homology of a chain complex. Yeah, yes, that's what I mean. Um, okay, yeah. yeah. All right, great, awesome, thanks. thanks. Um, okay, so, or we can, uh, one moment, um, so, or we can take the, the filtration first, um, and by that I mean, uh, So from this, we, we obtain this filtration. Um, we have this filtration of the cohomology uh, where the filtration is defined by Fi is equal to the image um, of uh, x. Right. 
Um, and then, uh, and then you take the quotients. Um, so then you take the quotients and that's going to be uh, what we want on the final page. Uh, So that's the, the image of the homology of Xi and the homology of X, right? Oh yeah, yeah, this, yeah, right. Okay, hopefully that's right. Um, okay, so Uh, so this is essentially um, the Lee Ray Sayer spectral sequence. Uh, we begin with something like this, and we end up with this. Um, and this is basically what we do for the Atiyah Herzebrook spectral sequence too, except um, we're going to use generalized cohomology theories. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure about this. Um, I, I think that the, uh, the spectral sequence that you wrote down is concentrated on Q equals zero. So it seems like it can just have a D1 differential. Um, I, think that, I think the point of this, uh, someone else can, can help me out if, um, uh, because I can't remember it perfectly, but, but uh, the, the, the point is that there should be two spectral sequences that, that converge to the homology of X. And, um, and the one that you, the E1 page that you wrote down is one where it's somehow easy to see that it converges to the homology of X. But then if you do this other filtration, um, then, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Okay, so, so this isn't like the full um, Sarah spectral sequence. Uh, but I guess what I meant is um, this is like, we'll do something similar to this to get that to here's a brick sequence. So this is, okay. if you uh, look at this spectral sequence, um, that's exactly right. So, so uh, we only have um, non-zero uh, groups when Q is equal to zero. So, so what you end up with is just, um, this is, page one. Um, and when we're doing homology, the differentials go like this. Um, okay, I think I'm getting so I think some these index come, confused. I think these come from a double complex, right? Like you have that on your E0 in like the uh, so like the the i filtered piece of the the skeleton would be on the bottom row. Yes, exactly. Row. Yeah, you can make a double complex, and then if you have the spectral sequence of a double complex, you can take a vertical or horizontal homology, and with one of them, if you do one of them first, you, you swap. You take the two different ways of doing it. One of them tells you what e one or e two is easily, and the other one tells you convergence easily. Um, um, I mean, what, what do I mean by easily? I mean, that's, that's the idea I think that Paul was, was getting at earlier. Sorry, I didn't mean uh, to talk over you. Okay. I, uh, yeah, so, so I just wanted to show, um, how, how this gives you that cellular cohomology is, um, ordinary cohomology. Uh, which I think also answers Juan's question in the chat for what it's worth. This is, this is not the same as the spectral sequence yeah, associated yeah, to a yeah. vibration. 
Yeah, so, um, so basically what I was getting at here is you can show that um, the differentials you get are, are the same um, as the cellular differentials. Um, so, so these end up being cellular differentials. So then the E2 page is going to be um, cellular homology. Uh, and at this point, um, at this point, all further differentials are trivial, um, just for degree reasons. So that means uh, we have already reached the convergence stage. So this is equal to the uh, infinity page. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to state the Sayers factor sequence uh, because, yeah, so you know that um, if we want to do the Sayers factor sequence, then we, we begin with a vibration. Um, and we'll assume that B is the basis path connected and, uh, or it's simply connected to simplify things or just say that um, pi one of B acts trivially on uh, the cohomology of the fiber. Then uh, the Sayer spectral sequence says there is a spectral sequence um, with E2 page, the cohomology of the base um, with coefficients, the cohomology of the fiber. And the E infinity page is going to be the cohomology of X. Um, and the way you prove this more or less is you take the filtration uh, of X determined by um, by P and so fil filter X with uh, P inverse of the filtration of B. Okay. Um, so now I think I'm going to move on to the idea Herzberg spectral sequence if, unless there are any questions. Okay, so let me begin by uh, reminding you what a reduced generalized cohomology theory is. So we sorry, would would you mind saying so the the thing you wrote here is the Sayer spectral sequence. What is the, the thing above it? Uh, what is that spectral sequence converting to? So it converges to uh, the cohomology of H, or sorry, cohomology of X. Um, so so this is the e infinity page and this gives you the cohomology of X. So what this shows is that the cellular cohomology, which is the E2 page, has to be the same as the cohomology of X. Let's see, uh, for that, when you just say cohomology, do you mean singular cohomology? Yeah, 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 singular. I see, I see. Okay. So this is like a comparison between singular and cellular or something. Right. Okay. Um, okay, so reduced uh, generalized cohomology theory. Um, so I know the notation is usually E, but I'm going to use G because we are already using E for the sector sequence. So um, G tilde from, uh, from pointed spaces to graded abelian groups. Um, one, it's homotopy invariant. Uh, there's a natural isomorphism uh, to 
three, if there is an inclusion, then uh, there is an exact sequence. Uh, And finally, it takes uh, co-products to products. So wedges of spaces go to products. And one, uh, one very important property of this is that um, if we look at maps of spheres, so let's say F is a map of uh, Sn to Sn uh, with uh, with degree n, or sorry, with degree m. Uh, then, uh, then there's an induced map. Uh, and this is also multiplication by m. Okay, so this is not too hard to prove. Um, just a quick idea of how it's proven is recall that um, the homotopy class of F is determined by its uh, degree. So that means you can basically just prove the statement for a single degree M map. So just choose uh, the degree M map, which is given by like collapsing uh, everything except for like N or M, M points or M open balls, and then uh, the competition with identity. You can show this has degree M, and uh, and then we're just going to use this fact that coproducts go to products. Um, and this will give you the lemma. And the reason why this lemma is important is this uh, actually gives you that, you have to use this to show that the E2 page is what you want. Um, okay, so, all right, so uh, let me, um, say what the final page is. Uh, so, so the goal, i.e. the final page of the Atiyah Hirschberg spectral sequence um, so, so again, we, uh, we have this uh, filtration And now the filtration on, on the cohomology is a little different because before we had homology, now it's cohomology. So the filtration is given by um, the kernel Um, and so uh, this gives you the filtration uh, Right, and then uh, finally, um, we would like to have uh, this to be okay. 
So this is what uh, the final page should be. Um, so as before, uh, we, we get the initial page um, by uh, by defining this to be GK of XP, XP minus one. Okay. Um, and we can simplify this, right? So we can simplify this because, um, so sorry, I forgot to say, uh, when I write G, I just mean a generalized cohomology theory and uh, G tilde is associated reduced generalized cohomology theory. So this will be uh, G tilde of XP over XP minus one. Okay, and uh, okay, so the quotient here is just a bunch of, it's just a wedge of P cells, right? And now we can apply um, property property two, right? Because um, because SP is the suspension of SP minus one, so this is actually just equal to um, g tilde of k minus p. That's not. Um, and here we can write this as CP X G K minus P of a point. Okay. Okay, so now uh, now let's formally state what the Atiyah Herzberg spectral sequence says. Um, So again, X is a finite CW complex and G is a generalized cohomology theory. Then the spectral sequence says uh, we can have uh, E1 of P Q to be precisely this. Um, and E2. is uh, reduce homology and the final page is this uh, this this quotient of the filtration right so uh, we we show that the filtration oops, the filtration looks like this so uh, Let's copy it here. Okay. Um, so you don't really, when you're using this, you don't really need the first page because you can just begin with the second page and like go from there. But, um, okay, I'm running a little bit. Yeah. You're, you're running a little time. Okay, sorry, go on. Okay, yeah, so I, I, well, there was, I wanted to like go through the construction in some detail, but I don't think. Uh, okay. I, I was going to ask, why is it the E2 page reduced homology? Um, so we, there is a version for uh, for unreduced, um, but I think uh, if you do reduce homology, you're just removing a copy of Z, at least mm -hmm. for K theory. And um, I think that's useful because it won't like that Z will never have any 
differential is going from it. So like if you write it in the in the unreduced version, um, yeah. you might think there's something going on with it. I, I'm fine with that. It's just uh, if you take the if you take cellular cochains on, I mean that this cochain complex computes, I thought unreduced homology. Um, but so yeah, if you use unreduced homology here, then it will compute unreduced homology. But okay. if you take reduced, then it will compute reduced. Okay, um, that's what I, I read at least. Uh, yeah, so. So I, I I do have notes for this where I um, like go into the homological algebra in some detail uh, and work out like the exact couples. So, but I don't think it's a good idea for me to write all that out here. Um, so I think um, I would just move on to examples. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is converging to. Uh, to so, of course, the the main example. Um, well, not of course, but the main example I'm interested in is um, the case of K theory, um, complex K theory. So, uh, so this is um, unreduced and this reduced, and. Um, this is always just uh, just a factor, an extra factor of z. So it is useful to compute this, I think. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So if we're interested in K theory, so. If we're interested in K-theory, things are simple because of bot periodicity. So bot periodicity um, says there is a natural uh, isomorphism This and uh, okay, so what this means is there are really only two groups we have to worry about. There's K zero and K one. Right. And um, so if we're interested in this spectral sequence here, we should know what K zero and K one of a point is. Um, Sorry, is this a it's like a complex K theory or real or yes, complex. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, there's the other one with like eightfold periodicity. Is yeah. that the, the real the real one? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's the real one. Um all right, so okay, so um so K zero of a point is Z and K one of a point is just zero. So this is very nice because it means that uh, the rows are going to be periodic um, on the E2 page. Uh, and, in, and every odd row is going to be all zero because this will be zero, the coefficient group. But also means more. Um, this is a natural isomorphism. So what this means is uh, the differentials, which are, again, these differentials come from these long exact sequences. And so if you really want, you can chase out the definition and see that the naturality implies that uh, the differentials themselves are also periodic. So really you can just think of there as being one row. Um, yeah, so let's do some examples. Uh, okay, so one, um, let sigma G be the, uh, 
real orientable surface of genus G. Okay, um, so let's compute the K theory. Um, so in this case, uh, let's just use unreduced version because there's no reason to use reduced. So, uh, so what what is the E2 page? Um, so there's Z, Z two G, and Z, and uh, <clears throat> every and then like the odd rows are all going to be zero. And then this is going to be repeated. Okay, so um, so what is the first non-zero differential? Well, the first non-zero differential has to be D three always because just for degree reasons. Uh, uh, so D two is always going to vanish because it's going to hit one of these uh, odd numbered rows. So the next one, D3, you can already see there's going to be like nothing non-trivial. Can you maybe remind everyone what the degrees of the differentials are? Right, so, so DI uh, is um, I negative I plus one. Yeah, yeah, so, so D2 is two, negative one. So you see in particular that like D2N, D2K is always zero for K theory because the odd rows are, are zero. Um, yeah, so, so that's great. And uh, so this gives us that, uh, so in the end, we, we only need to look at, um, one row and uh, k k zero is going to be um, like filtered by the even indices. And k one is filtered by the odd indices. So um, like, so if you just look at, what we usually have for spectral sequences, you have this filtration by the diagonal, but um, in the simplified case it, for of K theory, it, it always turns out like this. So that means that K zero here is equal to D squared and K one is D two G. I have a curious question. Do you, uh... Can you say what the generators are in terms of vector bundles? Perhaps that's something you uh, didn't prepare though, but maybe someone happens to know. I was also just about to ask that. Um, well, I, I don't know, um, but maybe we can figure it out afterwards. Great. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so next example, CPN. Um, so CPN, what is the cohomology? So the E2 page um, looks like, so there's a Z in every other row, I'm sorry, in every other column. And then B rows. Okay, so this is pretty curious because um, not only every other row is zero, but every other column is also zero. And it's easy to see that there will be no non-zero differentials. So all differentials are zero, just by degree reasons. Because like uh, the differentials have different parity, like the, the up and down, the up and right ones. So, yeah, so, uh, so what this means is um, K0 is uh, Zn plus one. 
k1 is zero. Um, and of course, this is as groups. Um, there is, of course, a, a product a ring structure on kx given by the tensor product. Um, and if you're interested in that, uh, the atia Hirschberg vector sequence does not give you information about the ring structure, but you can prove through other means um, that, in fact, k0 of kpn is equal to uh, the same as the cohomology. It doesn't? I thought the atia Hirschberg spectral sequence was multiplicative. Uh, I mean, maybe I wasn't aware of have... this. Maybe you have a reference that says it is not multiplicative, but I thought it was. Um, what would I mean if Adam mean? says it's not, then it's not. But what would multiplicative mean? That the differentials were a derivation. It's uh, multiplicative when you, when you take coefficients in a in the homotopy groups of a ring spectrum. Okay. Uh, Jeff, do you want to say more? Well, no, it's just it, it is multiplicative. Each page is a commutative differential graded algebra, and each differential is a derivation. Um, the way you see this, incidentally, is not through um, the exact sequence definition, but you need to use um, Carton Eilenberg HPQ systems to uh, see why there is a product. Those, those are awful. <laughs> like, there's, I think that's the worst way to understand a. Whether or not a spectral sequence is multiplicative. I mean, I think I mean, the Posnikov tower filtration on the spectrum that represents the cohomology theory is is a filtered okay, sure. ring spectrum. I'm, but this is now we're getting into my personal religious. No, okay, beliefs. that's yeah, no, that yeah, you know, I guess Sorry. yeah, that might be a better <laughs> that might be a better way. I just I think of it in terms of the definition that Etienne Hirsbrook originally gave, and that's how that one works. Yeah. Other ways Sorry. probably more intuitive. So I'm just wondering if this will actually like let us compute the ring structure on various spaces, like this multiplicative structure. I, I think so. Okay. Um, with with two different proofs, one one by Jeff and one by me. Yes. I don't, sorry. Sorry, I have kind of a basic question here, but do you have an analog of the the, the gut product for singular? Homology in extraordinary theories? I don't think there is one in general. Sorry, what was the question? If you have an analog of cup, uh, the cup product in singular cohomology, and you know you go to the spectral sequence and now you can start multiplying elements. Yes, it it depends on the it it depends on what theory you're talking about. So if it's I mean if it's represented by basically by by a by a a monoid object in spectra, a ring spectrum, um, then, then you do have it. Um, and so, so K theory in particular does have these products, but, but not all cohomology theories do. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Um, okay. So, so far, uh, there, there's been nothing going on really, like no difference from singular cohomology. So, if we look at RPN, Um, okay, then the, the cohomology is uh, a little more complicated. It's um, and then the last one is uh, the if n is odd. Um, again, for the same reasons as before, um, for Degree reasons, all differentials are trivial. Um, so what this tells you, well, it gives you K1 to zero and it gives you that K0 is Z plus some group G where G has order uh, two to the floor of N over two. Um, right, so, so of course, uh, if you just take uh, ordinary homology, it would just be the, the direct sum of all these Z2s. Um, but it turns out uh, you can show that this is actually um, 
v plus p over two to the m over two. Okay, so this I give you something that's different from singular cohomology. Um, okay, and, and so far we have still not uh, seen any examples with non-trivial differentials. So let me give you an example of RP2 times RP4. So like so far and like nothing I've said can uh, tell you like if a differential is actually non-trivial. So um, the way we're going to do this is actually calculate this with the Kunis formula. So th there is a Kunis formula uh, for K-theory also proven by Atiyah. Um, and it's exactly the same as the Kuhn's formula for singular cohomology. And what you, you get is that K0 is um, Z plus Z over two Z. Well, it's Z mod four and K one is Z mod two. Okay, and then, um, and then now we just apply that to your Hergebrex vector sequence and the E two page by the or by the ordinary Kunis formula. Um, it's going to look like this. And um, so this is unreduced, but you can just remember that there's nothing uh, non-trivial coming from these. So you see that there can be um, exactly one degree, which is non-trivial and that's D3. And moreover, uh, they cannot be zero. They cannot all be zero or else it just won't give you the correct order of the groups. So this proves that uh, D3 is is not zero. And in fact, um, one can show that uh, that D3 is a stable cohomology operation. Um, and it's not zero. And there's only one other choice for it. And that's like essentially uh, skew three of the Steenrod square plus like the appropriate reduction. Um, so yeah, so in any case, this just shows you that the differentials aren't just always zero. Um, okay, that's what do you mean by by D3 is a stable cohomology operation? Uh, okay, so D3 goes from um, One moment. Uh, so it's a uh, natural transformation that? of cohomology theories. And this is true of the first non zero differential in any Atiyah Hertzberg spectral sequence. Just because of the presentation, like just because of what the E2 page looks That's like. Interesting. Um, so the first non-trivial one is always a cohomology operation. And um, yeah, other things can be said about other ones. Yeah. Um, huh. Yeah, I'm forgetting what the definition of stable here means, but like- uh, It means commutes with the suspension isomorphism. Uh, okay. And that it's additive, and somehow yeah. these two things are sometimes equivalent. Okay, so it is a transformation like this that is stable. Um, yeah, and it's and it's natural in X, even if. Oh, I guess okay. 
And then if you if you look at the subcategory of spaces where this D3 is zero, then D5 is yeah. becomes a natural It doesn't have anything to okay. do with K That's theory really either. It's, it's for, for any uh -huh. coefficients. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. Sorry, Caleb. Yeah, so that's, I should like that's basically it. That's one more comment for those interested in algebraic geometry. Um, there is a much more difficult version of that Thiers Rick spectral sequence going from uh, motivic cohomology to algebraic K theory, which of course is a lot more difficult because even defining these is much more difficult. But yeah, that's all I have. Thanks, Caleb. Let's uh, give Caleb a round of applause.